Hi, and welcome back to our Espresso at Home series. I'm Catherine, and this lesson is gonna cover how to do light roasts in espresso really well. So we've talked a little bit about extraction and solubility, and how integral those are to the different parts of extraction. There are a few things that increase solubility or decrease solubility of a bean. Beans grown at high elevation tend to become more dense, more acidic, and the denser beans are less soluble. And then roasting light doesn't break a bean down very much. So if you have a coffee grown at a high elevation and then roasted light, you're gonna have to work really hard to extract that well. But if that is your ideal coffee and you want to make shots and that's just what you wanna do, can you? Yes, but be ready to do some extra work. So let's go back over what sorts of things affect extraction. There's temperature, there's grind level, which affects both contact time and surface area, and there's ratio, which doesn't change the rate of extraction, but does affect overall extraction. Ultimately, dialing in a light roast follows much of the same profile as dialing in any shot. Bitterness indicates over extraction, more likely from channeling, not from overall over extraction, and sourness indicates under extraction. You're probably mostly gonna be dealing with this side though, since lighter roast coffees are less soluble. And to start with a light roast, I'll actually go in a slightly different order than I might for a medium or a darker roast. So first is heat. Here is the ideal time, I think, to adjust your temperature if your machine can. Up the temperature on your machine by several degrees. A lot of times the default is somewhere around 200 Fahrenheit or 93 Celsius-ish. So up that by a good one, two, three Celsius or four, five, six Fahrenheit. This is a good way to significantly improve extraction quickly without having to mess around with the different doses or doing a lot with longer shot times. I would just make the one change, I'd try a shot, and then I'd probably move on to other steps. Temperature isn't something I'd spend several tweaks on, just up it a little bit and move on. A second thing you can do is decrease the ratio, that is up your yields or decrease your dose. You know that normally increasing the yield creates a weaker and more extracted shot, and since light roasts are hard to dissolve, that extra extraction can actually be the right amount for a shot. It will have to be a little weaker, but you can get to a nice balanced shot by having a lower dose or a higher yield. And one other thing I'll mention here is that body and flavor clarity are two ends of a spectrum. The more body you have in a coffee or in a shot, the less flavor clarity you have. The more flavor clarity, the less body. Body comes from oils and sometimes even fines, and they sort of just blend together all the flavors that you have. The flavor stays there, but they aren't as distinct. Typically, espresso has more body. There's a lot of oil and some fines in the shot. And then way on the other side of the scale, you have like a Chemex, which has a lot of flavor clarity, very crisp, clear flavors, but not a lot of body because you have this thick filter that catches most of that body, that oil, the fines. And when you keep adding water, you're diluting the body more and more, and you're able to have a little more flavor clarity. So having a little bit weaker, a little bit thinner of a shot might be really enjoyable if you actually have some really fruity, delicate, or unique flavor notes that come from your light roast. And if you're going for a black shot, then weakness won't be as much of a problem as if it might be if you were to make that shot into a latte. In that last lesson, we talked about when you're choosing an espresso, how to choose based on what you're gonna be making with your espresso. So if you're only, only making lattes all the time, I honestly wouldn't recommend a really, really light roast. Also, remember that a taller bed will slow the flow rate. So depending on what you're doing with grind, you might decide that keeping the same dose and increasing the yield is the way to go, or you might wanna drop the dose, especially if you're going to go with really quite a fine grind to help with that flow resistance. So now we'll go back to the grind level. Going finer will increase extraction to a point, but remember that when we get to too fine, we have significant channeling from choking the machine or from clumping up. If clumping is the primary suspect in your channeling, then try out a new distribution technique, maybe with like a Weiss distribution tool or some pins to stir up the grounds, dose into a separate container so you can shake up the grounds and break up the clumps. And then if you pour into your portafilter, make sure to pour really evenly around the basket. But if you just think you're too fine for your machine, if you're seeing like a very slow yield and then it suddenly picks up, you'll wanna go back a little bit coarser, maybe try dropping the dose or increasing the yield again. And if you've hit that choke point and you've gone back up, you just wanna stop on grind. You can drive yourself crazy going in circles with the grind, especially with light roasts where you wanna get really fine and get your extraction up, but 
don't do it. Don't run in circles. I hope you've learned a little bit more about light roasts and have some ideas for how you're gonna do some light roast espresso at home. Our next video will be covering milk steaming. You can find the link to that in the bio. And if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. You can also find other classes at sagebrushcoffee.com. Thanks again for watching. I'm Catherine, and I hope you have a great day.